because this blue sweater and Chris Evans in it has been burned on my brain <laughs> forevermore. And that was the moment that I that I actually finally got. I, that's where it really legitimately clicked for me. Um, those pictures of people freaking out over Elvis, right? Right. Or over the Beatles <laughs> and how those women would like be crying when they would see them come out and they'd hear their music or they'd be, you know, touching their hands and they would just be, I always rolled my eyes at that and thought that was the most ridiculous uh, guys, Chris Evans, <laughs> that moment. You found your fangirl. I found my fangirl. That was the day I found my inner fangirl. And, and it she came out. <laughs> Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm Patty Holliday, your host and head fangirl in charge. And today we are going to start the discussions about the D23 Expo, which is kind of like my Super Bowl <laughs> as a big Disney fan and movie lover and everything entertainment with a Disney flair. That's me kind of summed up all in one experience. It's, it's the D23 Expo. That's, this is, this is, this is my jam. This is, I am so stoked about the fact that it's not even that far away anymore. Yay. So we know that there's going to be, I know that there's going to be a lot of talking about this topic in the next couple of months. So just be prepared. Heads up. We are not going to call cover everything in one discussion. Um, now, I do have Teresa back on to Fangirl with me. Hey, Teresa. Yeah. Hello. Thank you for having me back. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, Teresa is is a lot like me in the sense that she loves the D23 Expo as well and all things Disney. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, quick note. By the time you're listening to this, San Diego Comic Con's going to be over, and I will have probably done an update with all the news that we learned that I love to fangirl over. In other <laughs> words, the Marvel information that's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm anxiously waiting for that panel to hurry up and get started, which is a short couple of hours away. Uh, but I will uh, definitely have something up, uh, you know, all about that. And then also some guesses as to what they shared with us at Comic-Con versus what they're holding back to share with us at D23. So that's that's all coming down the pipe. Anyway, I'm over here, you know, trying to figure out how to get to Comic-Con because, Teresa, I love crowds. I, I, I love them. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's a little overwhelming. For, it, it, yes, yes, yes. Comic Con's like a whole nother level. It, it really, it's insanity, and I love it from afar. I have no idea how I'd love it <laughs> up close and personal. Well, and I think I think D twenty three Expo is a good stepping stone. I do too. I, I so, do too. Yeah, I feel like that's like the mini, you know, the mini big con. It's still yes. a big con. But it's not like that crazy. Uh, so anyway, we'll see. We'll see someday. Someday I'll get there. Um, <laughs> So we are talking D23 Expo, and this is happening August 23rd through 25th in Anaheim, California, just to get everybody on the same page as to what all this means. Now, Teresa's been, I've been, uh, we actually ran into each other uh, randomly last time. A very brief fleeting moment. <laughs> yeah, that was just so funny. I looked up, um, Teresa travels with a little Gertie the Dinosaur, which if you're a Disney <laughs> World person, you'll know what that means. She travels with this little Gertie the Dinosaur, and I, it was Gertie that caught my eye <laughs> yeah she she's she's tiny but she stands out she does she does i we were I, this was like at the was it honda was it the pink yes they had it wasn't a minivan per se but it was pink it had dots on it and a giant mini bow right and they had a, a photo opportunity there and you were i was there getting my picture taken and you were next in line and i always said to her gertie and i'm like wait what's happening on? <laughs> what is happening yeah see i fangirl everything including little <laughs> green dinosaurs uh, i mean clearly i do too i see nothing wrong with that <laughs> right <laughs> right all right so i've as i've talked here about Teresa, let's go ahead and officially make the introduction. Um, everybody meet Teresa. If you listen to our Veronica Mars episode, um, the first one that we've done, because we're going to have to have a talk once you have yes. finished, because I know you're yes. mid, mid-season mid four right now, but once you have finished, we are going to have to have some talks about this season. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but you might recognize her from that. And if you haven't listened to that show, 
go back and listen to it, especially if you're interested, if you've seen all this hype and all this discussion over the last couple of days with Veronica Mars, because uh, it dropped early on us. It dropped early on us. Big surprise. Thank you, Kristen Bell, for giving us all a birthday present. <laughs> I know. It was a great way to celebrate uh, Kristen's birthday. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be back to talk about that soon. But Teresa Mabe is a fangirl, and she's up in Maryland, and you can find her online at insightfullife.com and various various places on the internet, mostly on Twitter. <laughs> yes. And uh, what else do you want the people to know about you and give us your social handle so they can come find you? So on, yes, on Twitter, I am Gertie the Dino, referencing the, the aforementioned small dinosaur. Uh, and on Instagram, it's insightfullife with periods between the words. I am obviously, you know, I'm a huge Disney fan. I love all things parks, entertainment, and a lot of that shows up on my my social media feeds. The other thing that I discuss a lot is web accessibility, particularly mm-hmm. geared towards people who are involved with social media, bloggers, brands, and educating them on how you don't just have to, if you have a website, you know, you want it to be accessible, but even if you're just sharing Instagram photos, there are ways that you can go about doing that. So it's something I'm passionate about. And if you have any interest in that or in Disney or in Veronica Mars, you can follow me on (laughs) any of my social media handles. And uh, like I said, she's on Twitter, like 24 seven, she's old school Twitter. I am, but I will also say if you're going to be attending D23 Expo. If you are not attending, but you want all the news, Twitter is the best place to get everything the moment it comes out. Just follow the the D23 hashtag and you'll see every update that is happening during each panel. Yes. Hashtag D23, hashtag D23 Expo. It is a goldmine of info out there. And of course, uh, we're going to be there. So we're also going to yes. be throwing that out there. And you can follow uh, Teresa and I. I'm on Twitter all the time too, at No Guilt Life. And uh, happy to to share what we what we know when we know it when we're there, which is yes. not that far away. I'm so excited. No, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. So first I'm going to, we're going to start with the question, which is uh, what is D23? Now D23 is the official Disney fan club and it was created on March 10th, 2009. So it is actually celebrating its 10 year anniversary this year at this conference. That's kind of exciting. It is. And they haven't, and I don't think they've announced any special 10th anniversary not yet panels or announcements. Mm. So I'm excited. I, I would be very shocked if they did nothing. So I'm excited to see when that comes out. I'm assuming something will happen. Uh, they could surprise us and, and pass by and think 10 years isn't that big of a deal, but it's a big deal, Disney. So uh, yes. we we're expecting it. Your fans are, are expecting it. There will at least be a cupcake. <laughs> there should be a cupcake, right? <laughs> <laughs> now the D23 Expo is the biannual fan event and it's held in Anaheim, California. It's always been in Anaheim. I know every year all the Walt Disney people whine and say we want it at Disney World. Well, I don't think it's ever going to happen for logistics purposes. I have yes. I have reasons why I think that's not super likely to happen. I Again, I could be wrong. Maybe that's the big 10-year anniversary announcement is that next year they're going to do – or not next year because it's every other year. <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> um, I know. Everything is next year. It's not. That's super important to know, people, is that 2019 and then we're not going to have it again till uh, 21 unless, again – they they changed something on us, but it seems to it seems to work well with the news uh, that they that they put out for this particular event. Yes. to do it every other year, so I wouldn't expect that to change. Um, and for Floridians, they do on the years that they do not have D twenty three Expo, they typically will have Destination D, which is not on the same scale, but it's usually a one or two day mini conference where there's one set topic and you it's the nice thing about it is you don't have to choose what panel like am I going to go to am I going to get into this one you do you go you purchase your ticket and then you get to see every single panel that they're having it's all in one one area so if you can't make it to D23 Expo this year keep an eye out for the announcement for the next destination D event and I've never done that before so that's actually a super smart tip to throw out there for folks that um you know, are interested, but not ready to commit to the craziness that is D23 Expo like we are. (laughs) Yes. 
Um, all right. So what, what happens at D23 XO? Uh, they, they announce, they drop all the news, all the info that's coming out from things like Marvel movies, Disney Studios movies, Pixar movies, television shows, merchandise. The parks, and, parks and resorts. Parks and resorts information. It can all be found at the D23 Expo. So for example, uh, how I'm super excited, and I'm, I'm assuming you are too, Teresa, with uh, Galaxy's Edge. Yes. That was announced originally, yes. officially announced at the t- uh, 2015 15. Mm-hmm, D23 Expo. And so it's that kind of thing uh, that they use this as they have all their fans. We're all in this one big room together and they just drop all this crazy info on us and we all go nuts. And it's so cool. Uh, <laughs> it is just a fan well, and, it's, <laughs> and it's one of the things a lot of the times where, where if you're home and they're announcing news, you get excited about it, but you don't necessarily have people with you who are yes. equally excited. And here, everybody is very excited. It's It doesn't matter what aspect of Disney you're interested in or aspect of entertainment in general, there is something for you there. Then there will be other people who, you know, they'll make a big announcement and you can geek out with them and you're all just screaming and having a great time. So it's, you know, even if you don't necessarily hear something that we're talking about that interests you, look at the full schedule once it comes out. I'm sure you will find something. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I will tell you, there's something about being with people that get you people that yes. that are on that same level as you are or some level of or at least they understand you and they don't look at you like mm-hmm. you're crazy you know when you <laughs> when you get super excited yeah. the 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 first one that i went to my big omg moment was at the um, live action panel. And this was before civil war came out before uh, captain america civil war came out and I can't remember. We'd already seen, I think we saw The Rock had already come out talking about Moana, which was super exciting and like awesome, like to be in the same room as The Rock. Like the man just (laughs) radiates amazingness. And And he's uh, also a big Disney fan. So he is. Even the celebrities are getting excited about these announcements. Oh, they totally do. They totally do. And I think that's what it feels so pure. It just really feels so pure when you're in the room with all of these people. But they had already talked about like Finding Dory and they had talked about um, Civil War. I think I'm not mixing up my my years. I think I've got the years right. Anyway, and next thing I know, they're, they finally, I think the music starts and they finally come out and it was probably Kevin Feige that came out and He's like, I, I brought a fa- I brought brought a friend with me, and Anthony Mackie walks out, <laughs> and I turned and I looked at my friend Don, and I said, "You know he didn't come alone. You know he did not <laughs> come alone." And, she, and she's like, "Calm down," because yeah. she'd been she, she'd been to 2013, and uh, this was my first time, so I was losing my <laughs> mind. Thankfully, I was in like the back row because right. that was it's my first con. I didn't know what I was doing. So I somehow <laughs> ended up in like the way back row. And so luckily, I didn't, you know, embarrass myself too close to cameras or to, <laughs> to anybody that they would have noticed. But I'm not kidding when I say I just knew, I just knew, I just knew. And sure enough, Anthony comes down. And he's like, hey, guys, so good to be here. I love this. I'm so glad I came here. I just flew in all the way from uh, Germany. But, you know, I didn't want to come by myself, right? The place lost it. Like, we all just went insane, just went absolutely nuts. And the next thing I know, here comes Chris Evans in the the infamous blue sweater. And if you guys want to know what I'm talking about, I will put up a picture on the blog to go with this uh, podcast because this blue sweater and Chris Evans in it has been burned on my brain (laughs) forevermore. And that was the moment that that I actually finally got... I, that's where it really legitimately clicked for me. Um, those pictures of people freaking out over Elvis, right? Right. Or over the Beatles <laughs> and how those women would like be crying when they would see them come out and they'd hear their music or they'd be, you know, touching their hands and they would just be, I always rolled my eyes at that and thought that was the most ridiculous guys, Chris Evans, <laughs> that moment. You found your fangirl. I found my fangirl. That was the day I found my inner fangirl. And, and it she came out. <laughs> she was and out she and never left. She never <laughs> left. And poor Dawn and her um, cute little husband had to listen to me screaming my head off the entire time Chris Evans was in the room. It was it was wonderful. <laughs> Um, so fast forward to uh, the last expo, which is 2017. Uh, repeat the same thing, but as you can imagine, they actually brought out everybody yes. 
from Infinity War. All were you at that one? No, I did not do the big okay. movie panels. So, but I I heard a lot about the the panels yeah. and yeah, the, so everybody's one, experience who wasn't there. Mm-hmm. That one was, and then I actually was sitting next to my friend Renee, who uh, fangirled with me about Aladdin uh, uh, on one of the earlier episodes, and I think she still has marks on her arms from, <laughs> from when I was grabbing her because I was just so I, I couldn't believe that they brought all of them like literally everybody everybody came out on stage it was it was really cool except for Chris Evans by the way right. that was kind of <laughs> any, anywho anywho okay so so that's that's my big thing girl I don't even know where I was going with that story I just had to put that out there because I got so excited thinking about Chris Evans in that blue sweater <laughs> <laughs> Let's dial it back now. Now, now you've heard what makes Patty excited and yes. why she's excited about D23 Expo. But what about you? Uh, what is your specifically like what's your what's your Disney basket background? How did you get into D23 Expo? Like what what caused you to plan for it um, in 20,000 uh, in 2017? <laughs> what, what, what caused that to happen? And how did you how did you get there? What did you do? Shocker. Twitter was involved. So, <laughs> so, you know, as a kid, I grew up loving Disney in the way that most kids do. I watched the movies on repeat, um, wore out my my Robin Hood videotape, but we only went to the Walt Disney World once. So it was around 2008, I think, when I went back for my second trip, first time as an adult, and I just fell in love with it all over again. And I wanted to you know, start planning other trips. I wanted to learn as much as I could about everything that was all the news that was happening, all of the things I didn't get to experience when I was there and so I could plan for them for the next time. So I was on the Diz boards for a while. A lot of people there joined Twitter and the all Disney Twitter is a crazy place in a lot of good, in a lot of good ways, other ways too. But it's it, you just become so involved within that community once you become a part of it. It's similar to how Instagram is now. You find your people, and yeah. I would see everybody who was at the twenty three Expo over the years. Uh, they were all talking about it, and it sounded like an amazing experience. So my first trip to Disneyland was in twenty thirteen, and. By complete coincidence, it overlapped with the expo that year. I I didn't go, um, but if you, just fun little fact, if you're in the area and not going to expo or if you are, do not have tickets for every day, the parks are completely dead during the day because everybody the day. is mm-hmm. in the convention center. Um, but when I was there, I did participate. Disney Parks blog had a 2.3 mile fun run one morning. Mm-hmm. So I signed mm-hmm. up for that. I was involved in the fun run and I got to hear more from people who had were doing that before Expo that day. And it just really made me excited to finally go. So 2017, the, the last Expo was the first time that I went and I had a great time. Uh, I know there's a lot of people, usually you hear about the lines and how crazy it is. And I think because I did a lot of the smaller panels, that wasn't my experience. There, there mm-hmm. were some lines, and the I got there early in the mornings to get in. I think the it start it opens at nine every day, and I would get in line around six thirty. But you know, we had that line, and once I was there, it was just great. I got to see so many people that I'd gotten to know over the years that I don't get to connect with in person very often. I got to hear from some of the Imagineers who created these things that I love. And it was just a very positive experience. Everybody who's there, like you were saying, it's so excited about Disney. It's so excited about all the news that's coming out. So excited about everything that they're seeing. And it's just, it's, I, it's just a great, very rejuvenating environment as a Disney fan. Oh, totally. I, I completely agree with that. You, you walk away from all of this completely ag- exhausted and, uh, spent, but in all of the amazing, wonderful ways. And yeah, the same thing with me. I mean, I ended up hooking up and meeting up with so many of my friends that I only knew online and, uh, spent a lot of great time together in lines and sleeping out on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, well, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute, because you and I do expo very differently. And I think that's important for people to hear is that how Patty does it isn't necessarily the right way and how Teresa does it Mm -hmm. may be more appealing or vice versa. And uh, that's just one of the the things about this. There is so much going on. It really is for everybody and for anybody. Uh, But I have a little caveat to that. (laughs) This is not going to make me popular to the parents out there. I am a vote. I, I, and this is a reminder. I have four of my own children. (laughs) 
I always say it's, it's, it's kid friendly, meaning Mm -hmm. like it's safe for kids. It's definitely, you know, safe for kids. However, this is one of these, this is one of those experiences where really you have to know your kids and really be honest Mm -hmm. with if it's worth bringing them or not. And at this point with my children, I would, I'm still like 50, 50. Some of them would go and they do it for one day, but they would not do three days mm-hmm. in a row of this mess. <laughs> they just, that's, they're not into that. They're not at that level of patience and that la- level of interest just yet. Uh, and the reason is, is, as we mentioned, it's the lines. So while I say it's, it's for everyone, I do mean that. However, you know, if your kid is still in a stroller, if your kid is not patient or doesn't want to sit all day waiting, maybe reconsider Expo um, either come without the kids, Mm -hmm. babysitters or grandparents or or somebody, um, or bring them, but really lower your expectations um, as far as how much time you can spend at Expo. And this is going to be an analogy, or this is going to be a scenario that I use a lot, but think about how you do, if you go to Disney parks frequently, if you've been to a Disney theme park, think about how you and your kids do on those long days in that situation. If you're the type of person who you need to kind of take a break to go back in the middle of the day to your hotel to get some rest, if there are meltdowns when plans change or things don't happen, I think that's especially the time I would recommend not bringing your children because if you leave Expo in the middle of the day, you are missing out on so much. Um, and it's such a, you know, it's nine to seven each day. So there's really limited time to experience everything there. And for the cost of it, especially flying out there, if you're getting a hotel, I, you know, you're, I don't, you're not necessarily going to get your money's worth or have the same experience as somebody who's able to stay there all day, get in, wait in line for panels and not have to worry about keeping track of additional people. Yeah, no, that's, that's actually a really, really, really good point. Um, the only difference I will say is that, yeah, you're like, oh, my kids will stand in line. They love standing in line. They have no problem with it. Yeah, but they get to ride a ride at the end. Right. <laughs> this, they're not getting to ride a ride at no. the end. They're going to have to then sit and listen to people talk, you know? So that's just, just, that's just my, I'm putting it out there. There's pl- that being said, plenty of families come, uh, plenty of kids come, plenty of families come and have a great time. Just make sure you understand what you're signing up for and, you know, be honest with what your kids can handle because, you know, as a parent that uh, nobody's happy when the kids are miserable and and not having a good time. And that's not what you want to take away from this kind of experience. You want to go and have a great time. Right. Regardless. So anyway, that's just my, that's my tip. That's my number one tip is if you can either go without children or just really recognize what you can and can't handle or what they can and can't handle, then, you know, I, I, again, I don't judge you for bringing your kids. I just think it's important to know up front that you are going to be in a lot of lines. Yes. <laughs> and lines and children typically don't go too well together. <laughs> Especially when, you know, we're in a scenario where they don't fully announce what the schedule is. I think last year it was two weeks prior mm-hmm. to the start of Expo. Yeah. So again, if you're, it's hard to know if you're trying to pick, you know, oh, maybe we'll just go for one day. It's really hard to choose which day that's going to be because you, again, you have to wait until the last minute to kind of make your plan. So if you're someone who, if you would need to kind of make make those adjustments or know far ahead of time what you're getting into, especially I think with when you have children involved in that aspect also, it's, it makes it that much more difficult. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. That's a, that's a really, really good point. So, um, and, and one thing, Teresa, do you have to be a member? We mentioned that D23 is a fan club. Do you have to be an official member to come to D23? You do not have to be a member. However, there are added benefits if you have the gold member or gold family member package. They do also have a free membership, but that does not, I think there's one of the benefits is there's a Disney gold member pass queuing area that for some of the panels, it will get you in line ahead of the the general public queue. Mm -hmm. There Mm -hmm. is a Disney member lounge, I believe they've announced. I think there was also some discounts on merchandise, but again, these are all just if you're a gold member. So you If you are not a member, I went last year or two years ago, not as a member, I still had a fantastic time. It did not change anything about my experience, but 
it it just adds to the experience if you are one. I totally agree. Now you do have to have tickets. And just as a heads up, if everyone's like, oh, this sounds amazing. This sounds great. I totally want to go. Well, uh, hurry. Yes. <laughs> D23 Expo will sell out. Uh, right now, the three-day tickets are completely sold out and the Saturday tickets are completely sold out, which is very standard because uh, Saturday is usually, quote unquote, the big day. That's yes. most people don't have to go to work and school's out. And so as you can imagine, it's going to be a, a very busy day that day. So that makes sense. And then Friday and Sunday are still available. But again, like Teresa's mentioning, we don't, we can't tell you all the details as to what is going to happen on Saturday, Friday, or Sunday just yet. There are some uh, panels that have been announced, but not everything. I so think it's, you, it's maybe about 20% of yeah. what will be occurring has been announced. Yeah. So, so but take a, take a look. It's all online, d23.com. Um, you can go there, find the expo a tab and have fun with it um, <laughs> and, and see what, see what you're looking for. Now, um, I know when I go, my big things, as you can tell, if anybody knows me or has spent any time with me, I'm all about TV and movies. Uh, that's my entertainment. That's 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 what excites me, number one, first and foremost. So those are my priorities. And those are typically the, the big panels that they mm-hmm. have um, in the big D23 hall. And that is, again, what I will be focusing uh, for this year. Uh, The other thing that I do love to go to is the Disney Legends panel, which is where they honor uh, some, you know, just as it sounds like the legends that have, you know, participated in the course of the Disney companies over the year. And this year, like, uh, I'm just dying because it's Robert Downey Jr., Ming-Na Wen, ah! John Favreau, James Earl Jones, Bette Midler. I mean, there's just, there's so many great people being honored. And so that's Disney Legends panel. And then I also really do want to go to the Disney Parks panel because, well, duh, I love the Disney Parks and I want to hear what's what's coming, what, what they have planned. <laughs> um, so basically what Patty is saying is if you want to see her there, just <laughs> camp out in Hall D23 and she will be at those panels. Co- correct. That is essentially, those are my priorities. That's, you know, I, I haven't looked at all of the details of what else is out there just yet, but those are my main priorities. My problem with doing those in the past um We're caveating all of this discussion as well, guys, with the fact that things can and possibly are, maybe will change. We don't, we don't have all the details just yet. So there is some patience that, that comes into this whole planning process. In the past, D23 did allow you to, to line up the night before, sleep out on the hard concrete basement floor (laughs) in order to secure your spot to get into the big panels. And that's what I have done. I am that insane person that I have a little chair that weighs like two pounds that like folds up and I carry it with me in my backpack. (laughs) I have this little blow up um, (laughs) mattress that um, is very simple and easy to blow up. And I go and I sleep on the floor like like, I'm that insane person that does that that kind of thing because I don't want to miss out on those big panels. Um, and again, if you are going, to, but do you need to do that? Well, sometimes you do. Some of those panels really do. Um, they close out. They fill up. They they they. There's over six thousand people that can get in, and that's they can only fit as many people as they can fit, right? And so, I. And particularly this year, because they're com- usually they would have separate panels for live action and animated films, and this year they've combined it into one panel. They did, and so Which that makes things a little bit more challenging uh, for those of us just trying to plan ahead, right? So you know, we'll see how we'll see how it turns out. So in the past, they did allow us to sleep out. We have not heard word if that is something they're allowing this year that they may not be allowing it because they are doing something else a little bit different that they have announced no massive details, but they did give us a little teaser that something different was happening. So we don't know if there's going to be these overnight lines like there were in the past. But if there were, that's what I do. <laughs> so that's me. That's Patty. Patty likes the overnight craziness. She likes being in that big room when, you know, Thor walks on stage so I can breathe the same air as Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, that's that's my jam. That's me. So that's where I will be. Um, now, Teresa, you do things different. Like, how do you plan? How do you prioritize? I know that you, you like different stuff than I do. Yes. Um, I think it's very interesting that I know you go and you are very much about 
here's everything new. Here's everything upcoming. Here are all the big announcements. And when I go, I love to hear from the people who have created the things that are already existing. So I think the the big shared panel we have is parks and resorts. Mm-hmm. Um, I do love I do love knowing what is coming up um, at Disneyland, Walt Disney World, at the international parks because that will impact me, you know, pretty frequently with as often as I go. Um, outside of that. I love hearing from the Imagineers who have created these attractions. Uh, last year, I went to an Imagineering panel that had Tony Baxter, Marty Sklar, and it was moderated by John Stamos. <laughs> and we got to hear stories just about the early days of the parks, the attractions that they've created, everything that they've worked on. And this year, I know there's one that's focusing on the Haunted Mansion, which I'm very excited about. Sometimes last year, they had a Pirates of the Caribbean one. So I, what, I feel like I should go back for a second. So there are four stages that uh, host panels. So there's Hall D23, which is has you know the very large, the film panels. It's going to have one on Disney Plus this year. It's where they have the Legends panel. Those are the large ones that people will typically wait hours to get into. Uh, there's also the D23 Expo Arena. There's Stage 28 and there is the uh, D23, the Walt Disney Archive stage. And so uh, usually the Walt Disney Archive stage is where you can find me camped out. <laughs> That's where, you know, I love, I just, I love hearing these background stories that, you know, if you go to the the big uh, film and entertainment panels, they can show you some clips that I feel like I'll see them on the internet in a week anyway. I'll see these movies eventually, but there's only so much that they can really tell you while you're there because they want to save surprises for people when they actually see these films going to the the panels on the archive stage and hearing these stories, they can go into so much more detail that I would never hear otherwise. And especially getting a chance to hear from these Imagineers while we still have them. It's, it just, that's, I love, I cannot get enough of that. So I've lucked out, like I was saying earlier, I haven't had the same experience with waiting in lines uh, that other people have had. And I think that just also works for me. I would get really antsy if I had to, you know, wait overnight to do something with still no guarantee that you'll still get in. I'm, I would not, it's just not how I want to experience expo. Cause it also gives me more time to see stuff that's on the show floor to kind of walk around and, check out the stores, check out, just have time to interact with people um, across the hall. So it's, it's funny that you said that because when you put it in that perspective, I was like, huh, I hadn't thought about it like that, Teresa. Now mm-hmm. I want to do it all. Um, because the history, if you, I am, gosh, I am almost insufferable. If you take me to Disneyland, I will pull up all these ridiculous <laughs> Uh, points of note that you must know about this little rock over here that was put into place right. by Disney Imagineer, <laughs> da, 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 because of its reasoning, because, you know, I, I like all of that nerdy detail history stuff as well. Uh, but I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it as, as you just kind of said that I was started thinking, I was like, you know what, she really is making a good point here. <laughs> Maybe I, Maybe I need to figure out uh, how, how to get into some of those archive uh, stages because I I do like all of that. And, and I really do nerd out about all of that as well. Well, and I think when you're thinking about prioritizing or planning how you want to spend your time at Expo, the ba- great thing about it is if you have to, if you can't get into your top choice of panel, there is going to be an excellent backup at the same time. So, oh, absolutely. You know, it's, yeah. you know it, I had, I struggled last year because there were a few overlapping panels that I had to make tough choices, but it was still okay. It's like, even if I don't get into this one, I know where I'm going next. It will still be a great time. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it completely. That's, that's fun. on. I think what, what my, what I did last year is I went to the big ones, uh, which ended up being two a day. And then, after the big ones, then I would go and walk the, the expo floor for a little bit. Now I'm not a big shopper. That also <laughs> plays into my ability to not worry about the expo floor that much because I don't shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a ton of shops. There's tons and tons and tons of ways to spend your money and to buy all kinds of amazing, very, very, very cool things that some of them are very specific just to D23 Expo. So if that is your love language, bring your credit card and get ready because there's a lot of cool stuff. For me, I would, you know, do the big panels and then I would walk the floor a little bit and uh, do do a thing here or there, you know, just depending on a, how long the lines were and, you know, how interested I was. And then I would leave 
probably around four or five o'clock and head over to Disneyland (laughs) because that's also one of the other uh, blessings and the curse, I guess, is the way I look at D23 Expo and where it's located is Disneyland is like a short 15 minute walk away. (laughs) And um, to the Disneyland junkie like me, it's really, really hard to say no when my literal happy place is 15 minutes away. So I give up a little bit of the extra expo time in order to make sure I can get some park time in too, because I I won't give that up. That's not, that's not negotiable over here. Uh, But I know that that's not how everybody does it. A lot of, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of people who are like, I want to spend every minute at expo or I'm going to spend until I get tired. And then I'm going to go and rest in my dang hotel room. And I'm not going to worry about making my way to Disneyland every single day. So again, there's no wrong way to do this, people. Right. Um, I am someone I will, I fly in a day early and I fly out a day late. So I have those, the two days, like before and after Expo, I use as Disneyland days. And I think last year I went to Disneyland two days after um, in the evenings and I did one at downtown Disney. Um, I think they do offer slightly discounted tickets for people attending expo. If you want to go into the parks, but as I mentioned earlier, it, the panels in theory can go until 7 PM each day and you might have a very early wake up the next morning if you want to get in line for the big morning panels. So just, I think it's mostly about, knowing what your limits are, knowing how much rest you need in order to enjoy yourself the following day and be functional. Disneyland is right there. So I fully recommend taking advantage of it and going. <laughs> Particularly, I I really only get out to Disneyland during expo times. So I haven't been there in two years. I'm very, very excited to get back and see everything that's changed since then, particularly Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge, I know. Uh, <laughs> and so I I know I will be spending time at Disneyland. I haven't figured out how much yet because I do want to wait for the full schedule to come out before mm-hmm, purchasing mm-hmm. tickets and kind of assessing how early might I be leaving on these days. But it's, you know, I think it's fantastic if you have the ability to go, but be realistic about how make sure you, you want to have the best experience possible. Disneyland could be a part of that. For me, it is. But if if you need your rest prioritize that. Make sure you get your rest because you don't want to be too exhausted to enjoy yourself the next day. Oh my gosh. And we're not even playing guys. It's exhausting. It's yeah. <laughs> being a fan, being a fan girl is so hard, <laughs> but you, but you are, you're on your feet a lot. You're standing in lines a lot and you're probably talking and smiling a lot. Plus, at least for me, <clears throat> I get I'm just such a dork, but I get such a rush of (laughs) adrenaline that happens whenever Mm -hmm. they announce like this big, cool stuff or when they show me a clip that nobody has seen yet. Um, And, and, you know, I do want to point out to one thing. I think the the Civil War clip as well as the Infinity War clip that they showed us didn't get shown anywhere else. I don't. I remember looking for specific parts of each of those, like in all of the trailers that came out later, and they they didn't have them. So we see like early stuff that mm-hmm. they may end up taking out, or you just they don't share later. So sometimes it is super exclusive clips that you get, and so you aren't going to see it online right. in a week or two. So just saying, sometimes depending again on where your heart lies and your fandom is. I know for me it was it was totally worth the sleeping out and, and doing all that insanity. Uh, but I also know absolutely. For other people, that's no, <laughs> like, no, they're not doing it. So again, no, no wrong way to expo. And yeah, Disneyland is, is definitely on my, on my schedule as it is with you, because that's just where, that's how yes. we are. That's, that's our hearts. Uh, have you looked at the panels that have been announced? Is there anything in particular that's like your number one choice that you are like, I can't miss this one? What, what is that for you? So they did. Oh, I don't have the full list in front of me, so I might get some of them wrong. I said they they did announce what the uh, Disney parks related panels are going to be, and I think that's mostly what I'm prioritizing. Uh, so there is the mm-hmm. you know the Disney parks. I I know it's like it's parks resorts um, or Disney parks experiences and consumer products. I think mm-hmm. is the official full title. Uh, so I am I am excited for that. Uh, the haunted mansion one I mentioned earlier. There's. There are a couple books coming out this year. One is about the Imagineer Mark Davis, who he was very influential with 
Pirates of the Caribbean, among other attractions. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a book coming out about Marty Sklar, and there's going to be a panel about that. I know Joe Rohde is doing a panel who he's the the person who was behind, you know, Pandora and most of Animal Kingdom in general. Uh, I know there's, I think that might be the one where they're br- basically talking about bringing storytelling into the Disney parks. So right now from what's announced, those, I'm I'm circling those. <laughs> and I know there's there's going to be more coming up, especially, you know, once they announce more of the the Disney history panels, I will you know, see what's, see what's there. Um, I, the other big panel I'm debating is the Disney plus mostly because there's so much content that's going to be a part of that platform. I, I do want to hear a little bit more about it and I'm, I'm excited about a lot of what is going to be on there. Um, Mm -hmm. Also because they are having some imagineering based shows that are coming out that they haven't said much about. So yes, that those look so cool. I mean, they, they sound just, the very small snippets that they've given us about those sound like they're going to be, I'm, I'm nerding out over that too. So I'm, I'm excited for the D um, for the Disney plus. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's going to be a highlight. All right. So let's talk about, you mentioned something about, you know, being the most comfortable, whatever works for you, you know, being comfortable when you go to expo. And I think that's a good segue to talk about uh, what you wear, right? Um, Yes. These cons people, see a lot of what gets shown is is these crazy amazing cosplays and yes that is a thing and if you want to cosplay your little heart out at d23 expo you are welcome to do so and it's it's the coolest and and fans like me will take your picture and will stare at you and will just be (laughs) in awe and it's it's awesome you can also do disney bounding i've done disney bounding a few times and i love that that's where you kind of look like a character, but you're not necessarily in full costume. Uh, You could also just wear like, I don't know, like what you wear to the parks or whatever you're just comfortable in. There are no rules uh, other than the official D23 rules Um, as far as, you know, what's the right way to, to dress. So what do you like to do, Teresa? So this actually plays into why I generally don't do the big morning panels because I need time to get ready in the mornings. I, if you've seen my Instagram at all, you know, I love doing Disney themed outfits, especially when I go to the parks. I don't do full cosplay because I know I could not do it as well as the people I see there, but I'm definitely a Disney bounder. I love, I, I am Again, I'm a giant nerd, so I already know <laughs> and have my outfits planned out for oh Expo, my gosh. which is several Your weeks way. away. Yes. I have I have my outfits and I have some backups just in case. <laughs> so I'm I remember I had a discussion with somebody who I mentioned, you know, I've already started planning things. We're like, you need special outfits for this. I was like, <laughs> if if you're me, sure. <laughs> Not exactly. everybody. But I said this goes back to what I was saying before. Think of how you do a Disney parks trip. Uh, Disney a couple years ago had their big show your Disney side promo. And I think that's fitting for this, you know, however you would like to show off your Disney fandom, whether it is doing full cosplay, whether it's, you know, deciding to, you know, dress similar to a character that you've seen, go for it and just make sure that you are comfortable and have layers, especially if you do plan on being in any of the large, Uh, the large hall panels, because it can get chilly in the waiting area. It can get chilly in there. It can get really warm on the Expo floor with everybody walking around. So make sure you're able to walk around comfortably all day that, you know, you, you're just expressing yourself and having fun with Disney. That is like the biggest pro tip right there is to dress in layers, Mm -hmm. dress in layers, bring layers, bring, bring a bag, bring something that you can definitely put a jacket or sweater or something in there because, uh, some of those rooms are for re easing, like ridiculously cold. Um, and then again, on the expo floor, there's so many people, like so many people, guys, um, you might get warm. So absolutely, definitely think, think think along those lines. Um, Now, your best advice at this point in the planning process is what? Make sure, I think I mentioned it briefly earlier, have, think about it, having your plan, having your backup plan, and then being as calm and patient as you can be when all of that goes out the window. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's, I think getting yourself into that mental perspective is my best advice for right now, because we are still waiting for all the information to come out and there's only so much you can do. Uh, The other thing I'll say that 
helped me so much last year. Keep an eye out um, on the app store on your phone for when the D23 Expo app comes out. If you've attended in the past, you probably still already have it on your phone and are waiting for the update. But I don't think you can... At last time I went, you couldn't download it until they had the newest update released. So that should hopefully be soon. They might wait until it's a little closer to when the schedule is ready. But get make sure you have the D23 Expo app. Make sure you have purchased some chargeable, some, some phone chargers that you can carry with you because if you're sharing information or if you're looking for things on your phone while you're there, your battery will die. <laughs> oh, so, it will die. Yeah. You know, die. Think, Absolutely. we're a few weeks out now. So I think now is a good time to also think about what your packing list might look like only so that way you can have time to purchase any additional things that you'll need before going. Yeah, I'm actually going to put together a little packing list uh, for somebody like me who might be looking and eyeing ahead of sleeping out overnight and staying in those crazy lines. I'll let you know based on my experience uh, for the past um, two expos that I've been to what that looks like and what you need to know about staying out. It may be a moot point. (laughs) We may find out tomorrow (laughs) that uh, they have decided not to allow any overnight lines, but I'll still put it together because I think it would be helpful for probably any con that you might be going to, that you might have that need to to have some some info on what works and what doesn't work and some thought processes to help you through it. So I'll put something together and I'll I'll make sure that I link that here in the show show notes for you. No Guilt Fangirl is where you're going to find that, a nogiltfangirl.com. But I'll make sure that that's out there uh, soon as well. And I, I agree with everything that you just said. Pack your patience, pack your patience, pack your patience. That's the first thing you should put into your suitcase <laughs> because uh, things things can change and things, um, you know, especially if, if you are running on little to no sleep or you're dealing with other people that are running on little to no sleep, you know, things can, can happen. Um, Were you involved in the kerfuffle <laughs> last year between uh, film panels? Oh, no. So <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, what, I think which, this is a good example of, you know, this have is your a, plan, be prepared for that plan to change. Yes. Okay. So this is actually, this is a really good point. So what happened uh, last year is uh, we all got in line overnight for the um, live this was for the live action. No, this is for the animation. Was this animation panel? Yeah, no, it was for the animation panel. Animation panel was first. So we got in line for the animation panel overnight and um, slept on the floor. We were there early enough because uh, I am not a gold member. However, my friend that I was with was a gold member and the gold member can bring in one person uh, with her into the line. And so she was able to bring me in. So we did use that as as Teresa mentioned, that was one of the perks in the past uh, was we got a a little bit better line positioning because we were gold members. So we went in, we, we got favorable positions. We got into the um, animation panel without any major problem. So it was great. We heard later that something crazy happened and apparently the line that stayed out overnight suddenly got stopped and got halted And somewhere above us, (laughs) um, they were letting people in who did not, who were in a different line altogether, who did not stay out overnight. In other words, they hadn't earned their spot (laughs) is the way that many of us looked at it. (laughs) And they basically had just walked in. And, and were able to go in and they sat down and they got, they got great seats too. They actually had better seats even than we had, uh, which was crazy just to, to think about like what happened. And, and I never heard like the answer as to what exactly happened. I just know that some folks who had slept out all night long were shut out of that panel and they did not get to see Pixar. They didn't get to see Coco. They didn't get to see all of the uh, really cool stuff that was going on for the animation panel. And they were pretty dang upset about it. Now, Disney did uh, attempt to make it right by offering those folks like guaranteed entry into the live action panel, which was the next morning. Now that made somebody like me, who was like my number one experience, Mm -hmm. I want to be in the live action panel. I like had a little mini panic attack because I thought all these people were going to get in before I, before I get in, like, is there going to be room for me? That just made it heightened the whole like waiting in line instead of getting in line at like, 
three o'clock in the morning. We got in line like at nine o'clock the night before. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> because and when we got in line, the line was all outside and it was super long. And I even walked up and down and kind of did a general kind of head count because yes, I'm insane like that, and that's what I think. <laughs> and. I asked a couple of cast members, I was like, what do you think our chances are? We're way here. You know, what do you think our chances are of even getting into the panel tomorrow? And he, he, he was shaking his head and he was like, I'll be honest with you. I am not thinking it's going to be very good. And part of that was the factor that they already knew they had given away. I don't know, a thousand or 2000, whatever the number was wristbands uh, for those folks for guaranteed entry to get into um, that, that got shut out. So yeah, that was a big stress and it was a big drama. And of course, people, let's let's keep this in mind. Uh, it's entertainment. It's a movie panel. Like it's, it, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> in reality, would I have been upset and sad? Absolutely. But <laughs> would it have really affected my life? No, I'm not that far gone when it comes to these things. <laughs> I do recognize that. But it's one of those that literally I was coming to the to the expo for this one, <laughs> one mm-hmm. experience. And so, yes, it would have, it would have factored into my way of thinking. So um, as it turned out, we were fine. We were in a good position. We, we ended up in a good spot. We actually ended up in line with two girls who got shut out of that animation panel. And they told us their story and what happened to them. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't you guys get like guaranteed entry to this one? They're like, yeah, but we just didn't want to risk it. So we got in line <laughs> tonight oh, wow. anyway they were they were just like we're not we're not putting this up to any chances we're here we are we're we're here and we're like oh my gosh anyway so they were great and we actually ended up loving them and, and talking with them all night long and and it was a which is another good piece of advice Absolutely. make friends with the Absolutely. people you're in line with especially yeah. if you're in those lines because you will be around each other for a very long time yes 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 and we did and in fact in fact um <laughs> One of them was so incredibly sweet to me. I left the line to go and get something to eat. And, okay, so in theory, you're not supposed to bring food in with you. There are some exceptions. Sometimes mm-hmm. they don't check super closely, whatever the answer is. But I didn't have any food on me. And I went, as soon as the food lines opened, I went out and bought a, a hamburger, French fries, came back, sat down at my seat, opened it up in order to put my mustard and my ketchup on my hamburger. Y'all... There was no meat patty. <laughs> I got I got a veggie burger. I mean, I, there was nothing there. It was just a few pieces of bread and some lettuce and tomato. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I had been in line for probably 40 minutes to get mm-hmm. this. And I paid like 10 bucks, you know, to get this, this nothing burger, literal nothing burger. <laughs> and I was just sitting there and I was partially mad, partially upset, partially laughing. Like all my, I was tired. I hadn't slept in days. My emotions were all over the place. And I was just sitting there going like, what do I do with this? Cause I was also really, really hungry. And the girl next to me, that sweet, sweet girl, she <laughs> digs in her backpack and she comes out with a can of tuna. She was like, do you like tuna? <laughs> <laughs> at that point you like anything <laughs> I was like yes ma'am I do so I put tuna and I made a little tuna sandwich with that hamburger bun and the lettuce and it was fine and it was wonderful but that's exa- I mean that's if if we hadn't made friends with her I would have gone hungry like literally yeah. I'd gone hungry so good point good point make friends but that's probably our number one advice is to to just a come in with some sort of a plan but be flexible with that plan I see it all over the internet people saying oh you don't need a plan just show up and you'll figure it out ah you could you could you could that that would make me anxious and again this is all how you best experience something right. i i could not do that i looked at i had the app as soon as it came out and i was looking through everything even you know looking at the layout it, it does it lists all of the panel times it lists all of uh, throughout um throughout the show floor there are little stages and it lists everything that's happening on those stages it lists when the talent signings are and it has a full map of each floor of the convention center so i love the app but i i needed to know where everything was before i got there and that that made my experience much better yeah i'm i'm not quite that level but but i will say this the first one that i went to i went in completely uh i i just had no idea Okay, I had I had no preparation, no experience. I knew I wanted to go because I saw my friends on Twitter in 2013 and I was I was all in for the the experience, but I really had no plans whatsoever. I showed up and within the first oh my gosh, probably 
10 minutes of finally hooking up with my friend because it, t- it was a whole, that, that year was like this nightmare just to get into the building. Um, but I finally found him. I finally got in. I finally hooked up with them. And from that point on, I just looked at her and she was like, you look like you have a, you, the deer in the headlight. You, you know, they just, you, you don't know what's going on. I was like, I have no idea what's going on. And this is not me. Usually I'm a big, big planner. I was like, yes. I, I don't know what to do. She's like, I've got you just stick with me and we'll walk our way through this. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. So once I found my person, I was good. So bless Dawn. <laughs> for taking me under her wing that, that first year. The next year I was able to pay that forward with some other friends. And I, and, and again, we did the, we, we plan a little, but not over plan. Mm-hmm. We, we get a general idea of what we want to do, but we don't go crazy with it. And then it's all flexible. In other words, I want to do this. I'm cool with staying here and doing this, but you're done. You're tired. Go bless and release, you know, get, head, head back to the room, go take your nap or go to Disneyland. I'll meet you later. Like, it's fine. Like break up and go do what mm-hmm. you got to do. Because again, you're never going to be alone. There are so yeah. many, so many Disney fans that, that you are going to find people to hang with and people to talk to. So that's the other thing too. Just like we said, you know, either bring your friends or make friends or both. Any combination will work. <laughs> There's so, as you can tell, as we have just talked and talked and talked about this, this topic, there's so much more and and more details that we can go into. Hopefully we can go into those details uh, when more news comes out. And I'm hoping Teresa will come back on with me and and have more discussion about that. And we'll also talk about some just general, how to do a con information. Expo is the big one for me where I'll travel to, and I will, I will put a lot of effort into it, but there's a lot of local cons too that are just as cool and super fun to go to. And you can have some really great panels and there's still some tips that they, they all kind of bleed in and they, they connect t- together. So we'll talk about some of those, you know, further down for another episode. Um, just know uh, that we are going to revisit D23 Expo probably another time or two before the actual expo happens. And I'm going to be covering it live from the expo floor. I know Teresa is too. Yes. So Twitter's probably the easiest place for both of us to have those mm-hmm. conversations. That's where we love to do it. And it's going to get, you know, super fangirly and nerdy around here come August because we're going to D23. Uh, the, pitch, the pitch of our voices is just going to keep getting higher and higher and higher. <laughs> Probably accurate. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Well, thanks, Teresa, for joining us and fangirling D23 Expo with me. (laughs) Always. I know you love it like I love it. And we can't wait to get back to Anaheim together and to do all the things. Yes, in just a couple weeks. Just just a couple weeks. Now, if y'all liked what you heard on today's episode, I'd love a five-star review and maybe a share to your Disney-loving friends on social media. Uh, It helps more fangirls find us. And as I always say, it's never fun to fangirl alone. So invite a friend. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the No Guilt Fangirls podcast. And we'll be back to fangirl with you again soon. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you.